Hey everyone, it's 10.30, it's Tuesday evening and it's the 24th of September. And I have decided I'm going to do a bit of a, a vlog type video because I haven't done one for a, a week or so. Um, and at the end of this video I'm going to put some video clips on that I took down at Mum's. Which is just showing a few things that have changed over the last few months. And one of the um, vintage tractor my stepdad bought running. It actually starts up. Now, I'm just going to move to the kitchen. So first I'm going to talk about computers. Uh, the first one is my one in the uh, my main rig in the lounge. It's got an intermittent issue which is actually getting a bit more frequent than it used to be. It um, Sometimes when I get up in the mornings and I turn the PC on to boot up while I go use the bathroom and whatnot and sort myself up, out, get dressed. It may come up with an error. It doesn't do it every morning. It just seems to do it as and when it pleases because sometimes it will do it in the evenings like it did this evening. Worked absolutely fine this morning. Turned it on this evening and it came up with one of the two errors this evening. Now one of them, it just simply says disk read error, press control alt delete to restart. And the other one it may come up with is operating system not found. Please disconnect any drives that do not contain an operating system and restart the PC. And uh, to get both of those errors to go away, I actually have to disconnect the hard drives and reboot it. But it boots absolutely fine like there is no problem. Now I know it's not the hard drives because um, I've changed all the hard drives in that machine. They've all been changed now at some point. So in fact, it's not the hard drives. And the hard drives are functioning fine. I've only got my music on there and my Steam library, my game saves. And all of those are working absolutely fine. When I want to listen to music, they play fine. If I want to play games, they play fine and the game saves are still there. So I know it's not the hard drives causing the issue. Um, I have suspected an intermittent power supply causing a problem possible uh, or it could be the SATA array itself on the motherboard that's got a problem somewhere because it's done it from the day I built it it was a used motherboard I can't actually remember where I got it from um, I think I got it with a PC or something I picked up probably stupidly cheap or for free knowing me um, so if I did, there's probably a reason why it was cheap or free. <laughs> but yeah, it's always had this problem. It just seems to be getting more and more frequently. And it's more and more annoying. But my plan with that PC is... The power supply is old. It's about seven years old. It came with a PC that I bought from eBay about seven years ago. Windows 7, 64-bit. Quite a nice setup for its time. It suited me fine at the time. And it was a refurbished one. Um, and the power supply has pretty much been in use ever since then. I've replaced... Um, it's got two cooling fans in it. I've replaced one once and the other one twice. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's quite a high mileage power supply now. So I wouldn't be surprised if it is getting weak and that's what's causing the problem. I have known computers to do weird and not so wonderful things due to a weak power supply. Which I don't actually only found out because I'd actually just randomly replaced the power supply and all the symptoms went away. <laughs> so, even if I replace the power supply and the symptoms are still there, no big deal because I've been wanting to change that power supply for quite some time now anyway. So, uh, yeah, if it doesn't fix the problem, not an issue. Um, the other thing what I will do, if, it, if definitely, if it doesn't fix the issue, is change the motherboard. Why I'm waving this around, I don't know. I can't you go in the sink, to be honest. Um, yeah, because... It could be a problem on the SATA headers themselves. 
And if it is, I would probably change the motherboard and use that one in another build or as a spare. Um, and the other reason I would change it is because there's no header for USB 3. So I've got two USB 3 ports on the front of that PC that I can't use because I can't plug them in. I didn't think of that when I chose to use that motherboard. I actually sold the motherboard that I could have used that had the um, USB 3 headers on. Oops. But never mind, like I said, I may go the upgrade route at some point anyway. Because I want to upgrade the processor and I thought I might look at some bundles and just see what I can find. If I can find something reasonable, I'll probably just upgrade the motherboard anyway. <clears throat> So that's the plans for that computer. Now, last week I put a video up about a free PC that I picked up. It's going to be ditched. It's actually sitting in someone's driveway with the side cover here all hanging off. And, uh, you know, I clicked up the courage and went and knocked on the door and asked for it and I got it. It is running Windows XP, as you saw. It can be upgraded to Windows Vista. It is Windows Vista capable according to the sticker. And it actually works brilliantly. It's actually pretty quick. Considering its specs, I'm not surprised. But usually with Windows XP, especially an older one like this, I actually expect it to be running slow, just from age. And in my experience with Windows XP, because I did use it for quite some time before I upgraded to Windows 7. In fact, I hadn't that many years upgraded to Windows 7 before Windows 8 came out. I think it was only like one or two years. <laughs> yeah, so I actually find that the operating system itself can slow down over time. And the number of times I ended up reinstalling Windows XP because of that reason. So I'm pretty surprised that this is actually working as fast as it is. Now, I've been wanting to build, you know, a decent Windows XP based gaming rig because I've got a bucket load of games along the shelf, just the other side of this wall. Um, and I'd start to build one in that case. You know, using some real old technology like DDR RAM and whatnot and AGP video slot. Then this one came along. Now I could just bolt this all up, put a videos card, a videos card, a video card in it, blah blah blah, sit it down there, Bob's your uncle, I've got a gaming rig. Quite a simple one, but a gaming rig. I don't like the case. And I've got nowhere to put a hard drive to store the game saves on. So, I'm going to take the motherboard and the hard drive, because that's all I'm going to need out of this. And throw it into that case over there. It's got a decent power supply in there. Um, I've got ample room for upgrades for a larger video card if I wish. This has got four memory slots on it and it's already got two gigabytes so I haven't researched a motherboard yet but the fact it's got two gigs of DDR2 RAM installed and four slots I'm gonna presume it should be able to take four gigabytes. I don't really want four gigs I don't think I'm gonna need it um, you know I've picked up a bunch of my games and had a look I think I can get away with two gigs absolutely fine and the dual core processor is absolutely fine so but uh, I've got the space there to upgrade the RAM should I need to or want to I mean the original plan was to build a gaming rig in that thermal tape case anyway um, plus that's got better cooling because it's got the two the, there, spit that out again shall I the two fans at the front and the two at the rear and one of those fans is actually in front of the hard drives on that one whereas this one doesn't have it it's just got the exhaust fan and a very loose fitting um, very loose fitting PC fan there it does work it's just loose fitting that hasn't actually been put on there correctly but never mind I don't actually know how they got it on there the way they did in the first place that was a I'll give them 10 out of 10 for that see instead of the screws going through this top bit here and then into the 
the um, heat sink block, I've actually managed to get the screws in here. That's probably why they haven't been able to screw the screw all the way in. So yeah, I don't know how they got it, because those screws are quite long, so I don't know how they managed to do that. Where is it? An Antec fan? I'll try to sort that out and get that fan on there properly, because I actually like that, so... You know, the only thing I'll most likely do is just redo the um, thermal paste on the processor. As I don't know when this was actually last, you know, built, used and whatnot, or how long it's been sitting around, I'm going to do that anyway. The only downside is I've only got two SAR connectors, which isn't a problem, really. I only want one for a hard drive, and an IDE drive up here, the DVD drive, is perfectly adequate for what I want. That's already got one fitted, so I don't even need that. I don't need the power supply, because it's already got a half decent one fitted. So, <coughs> pardon me. The only other thing I'm going to have to find up is a half decent one of these, and I do believe I actually do have a half decent one of those that I can use. So, I don't know when I'm going to get to build that. I might try that Thursday if I get bored. But, Thursday I do want to have a good clean up in this crap hole. That is a bag of carrier bags that I'm going to take to Mum's. Because I've got so many. I've got a cupboard full here, look. There's, I don't know how many of these bags full stuffed down there. Because when do we do? Don't know how many I've got in there. <laughs> don't need them all. Um... Anyway, next, this old radio, the Echo. Um, I believe I have put the video up already before recording this. I can't remember. I'll have to double check. But in that video, I did say... Yes, I did upload. I've just remembered. I just remembered um, replying to some comments. I did say I wasn't sure if I was going to up upload this. Shall I try that one? It's getting late and I'm getting tired. That was going to... I'm just going to start again, I think. <laughs> I'll leave this in just so you can get... Holy moly, my tongue's not working tonight. Right. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. In the video where I featured this, I did say... I wasn't sure if I was going to restore this or use it for parts. Decision has been made. I'm going to restore it. I know some people probably wouldn't bother because of all the woodworm holes in it, but I'm pretty certain it's inactive. Um, and upon putting some photos of this on a Facebook group called Antique Radios, a few of the members suggested using like a, a wood filler or something similar to go over this to fill in the holes. Then of course I'd have to sand the whole cabinet down stain it, varnish it, etc, and, you know, refinish it. Which seems easy enough to me. It's quite a bit of work, but it's doable. And, of course, the chassis is, itself is going to need a lot of work. Uh, I'm going to start with the chassis itself first. Because if there's anything on here that is blown, knackered, no good, that I cannot get replacements of, then there's no point, you know, putting all that work into the cabinet, is there? I oh, didn't just break this for spares. So, provided there's nothing blown, because it could be an issue in one of these cans. There's five of them. This could be an issue, whatever that is, I actually have no idea. Tubes could be knackered. There's two, three, four, five, six of those. You know, the... the um, Transformer there, the audio transformer, I believe, um, could also be knackered. There's actually a very old capacitor here that is knackered. <laughs> you can see it's spilled its waxy electrolyte down the side there and the end has broken off. So that's why you need to recap these, preferably before you actually turn them on to try them. If you're uncertain on whether the radio has been recapped or not then don't put it in. Um, I made that mistake once and blew a capacitor so um, but recapping it that'll be the first step and it's 
It's a lot of work, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but I'm going to do this one last, just because it needs the most amount of work. The other two that I've got in the bedroom, if we make our way there, I still haven't put that into use yet. I need to do that as well. Yeah, the other two I've got in the bedroom, the pie and the Michael. Mum actually wants that one. So I may end up keeping this one. <laughs> but uh, the cabinets are in great condition for their age. I think I'm just going to leave them as they are. There's a few little marks on them, but I think because they are in so good condition for their age, it would just ruin their originality if I tamper with the cabinets. I'm going to leave those. The chassis are also in good clean condition, so I don't really need to do anything to them, apart from perhaps recap them. That one, I know for certain, is going to need some caps. That one, not plugged in, haven't had a good look at it yet, but that definitely need recapping as well. Uh, so yeah, TLDR or TL didn't listen. <laughs> I'm going to start with these two because they are the easiest. Still got die-cast cars all over the place. Um, car boot season is closing slowly. But I have just read a post from the guy that runs what they call the late ones around here. Which is uh, a Friday, a Saturday and a Sunday and a bank holiday Monday. When it's a bank holiday, obviously. And he said he's looking at probably, you know ending them for the season around about November the 1st. 1st, 2nd and 3rd might be the last ones. I think it just depends on how bad the weather gets. If it gets worse before then, then he'll finish it before then. Which is actually good because I would like to get another, you know, one or two car boots in this season. <clears throat> so... I'm busy tomorrow, but Thursday I should be free, and I'm planning to have a day here. I'm going to be busy again Friday and Saturday. <sighs> but anyway, I'll uh, try and sort some crap out in here and try and get rid of some stuff. As fast as I get rid of stuff, I keep bloody accumulating it again. <sighs> oh, and my moped is now running. I took the carburetor off at least two months ago. You know, because I intended to um, give it a good old clean out and put it all back together again after I put fresh fuel in and whatnot. And brand new spark plug. So last week I bought spark plugs, bought a pair of them on eBay for I think about £4 for the pair, NGK. Which is the um, direct replacement for the one that was actually in it. So I just went with the part number on the spark plug that was already in it and bought them off eBay. So I did that, drained the fuel out, blew the carburetor out with the air compressor because to be honest, I could see through the jets. I could see daylight through the jets so I could see they weren't blocked or anything. Put it all back together, couldn't get it to start. So... I got it to start eventually because I held the throttle open a little bit and uh, before I was having issues where I'd open the throttle right up but she would sort of cough and splutter and eventually get to full revs and even then she didn't sound happy um, which was the whole purpose for me doing this exercise in the first place so I took it all apart again Gave the carburetor a blowout a second time. Put it back together. Then I idled. Oh, that's what I forgot. The first time it didn't idle. Had no idle. As soon as I let go of the throttle, poof, gone. But the second time, I got idle back. But as soon as I hit the throttle, it just bogged out and stalled. There was no throttle. Um, so for a third time, I had the carb off. I gave it a very good clean again. Put it back together. Still didn't improve it. And then I realised, like a dickhead, I tampered with the um, air mix screw, because there's two screws on that cover right, on this moped. One for your idle, and one 
for the air mix, like just basically your air fuel mix. And I remembered I had the had that unscrewed quite a way, so I just I got it running and started screwing it in until I heard the revs change and it just fired up perfectly and now it runs. Still doesn't sound right to me, but does a 50cc scooter ever sound right? <laughs> Not really. But uh, yeah, she's um, running better. I can now hit full revs without it having to sound like it's just being lazy and eventually getting there. And then, you know, not liking it. It actually it likes it this time. So, I think really that could also do with a long run somewhere. But I'm not licensed and the bike is not road legal yet. So I can't do that. Uh, so, the moped requires now, for an MOT test, two tyres... I was going to say a battery, but I'm not 100% certain if a battery is required. On the count of all your lights and everything work regardless. Albeit they dim out when you haven't got a battery on. <laughs> to the, you know, sort of like as much use as a bloody candle, but yeah. So I think it's now going to cost me almost 100 quid just to sort the battery and a couple of tyres. Decided I'm going to have a go at doing them myself. I'm sure between me and my stepdad and maybe me and my brother we can uh, muscle a couple of tyres on those rims. Heck, he's muscled a couple of tractor tyres on the tractor. I'm sure we can do it with a couple of moped wheels. Can't be that hard, can it? Famous last words. <laughs> Very famous last words, aren't they? Um, yes, I've progressed pretty well with that. Um, the Transit Connect van that my stepdad bought, because the Escort van... The MOT tester didn't even bother MOTing it. It was that rotten underneath. It just wasn't worth it. <laughs> so um, that ended up being scrapped. We were trying to sell it, but someone bricked the window. And we know it wasn't a random act of vandalism because there was nothing left inside the van. If something was thrown, surely we would have found the stone or whatever, like, on the passenger seat because it was the driver's side window that was smashed. But we didn't. There was nothing left in the van. So we ended up having to scrap it because of that because it just devalued it even more, you know. You know probably less than scrap value would be what someone would want to pay for that after the window had been put through. So, um, he bought a Transit Connect. And the starter motor has always been iffy on that. Or the solenoid has. Um, I redid the wire that came down from the alternator and the battery. Because instead of taking a wire from the direct from the alternator to the battery to charge it, it came down from the alternator to the um, solenoid connection and then from the solenoid connection to the battery so that's how it charged the battery up because um, they were a bit manky so I redid those connections thinking that was the problem no nope. <laughs> um, but I did notice when I was doing that that the um, live coming in for that and I presume what you would call the trigger wire from the ignition you know where you turn your key in it turns on the solenoid which then activates the star mirror um, the contacts rocked back and forth and I thought pretty certain they're not supposed to do that I noticed if I put them in just the right position the van would start from the key and if that moved it wouldn't start and I got to the point where the solenoid was being such a pain in the ass that my stepdad had to pop the hood beat it with the, a tyre wrench because it's nearest thing he could find and then she would start from the key and she'd do that a few times and then you'd go start at nothing not even a click from the solenoid nothing um rather rinse repeat until it got to the point where banging the solenoid didn't even work so you had to short the contents the contents the contacts out with the handle of the tire wrench 
and even then you could hear it wasn't engaging the starter motor gear as it should it just make that spinning noise classic sign of a faulty solenoid so um, coincidentally last Friday we went out to somewhere near Beckles which is a place sort of close to the Norfolk Suffolk border I think don't hold me to that I know it's about an hour or so drive to get there but we drove out there to pick up a pair of rear tractor wheels for the tractor and a hood for the tractor and um, it turns out that where we bought those from breaks vans for spares and um, they actually happen to have a st replacement starter motor for the TDCI Transit Connect that he has so for £16 we bought one of those as well swap that it's been good as gold ever since I'll tell you what, that was a really easy job to do as well. It's right at the front of the van, at the bottom of the engine. So, all I did was just stick my head under the front of the van, undo all the wires. You got technically four, even though two of them should be co joined. But I, did, it, I couldn't get a big enough um, crimp terminal, so I had to do them separately. And that's the alternator and the battery wires. We undo the wires, undo three bolts, that's all it is. And the ground is actually connected to one of those. And the start motor just slides out. You slide in the new one. You put your three bolts on, you put your wires back on, job done. I think I'd actually done it in 20 minutes. Could have probably done it in about 15 if I didn't have to fight one of the bolts. But, you know, dirt, grime, and the fact they're bolted on so they don't fall off the bloody car... You need to use a bit of elbow grease to get them off. So, um, if I was on my own doing that, I would have filmed it. You know, just to prove that you don't need to be an expert to do a little job like that. Although in some vehicles, it's going to be easier than others. It just depends where they've decided to put the star mower. Oh, I've got a tickly nose. Look, I'm going to sneeze or something. Anyway, I don't know if we'll have the tractor done before autumn fully sets in, because obviously we're not going to be out there in the cold and wet tinkering with a tractor. So that's when uh, my stepdad will be in his model railway room. Doing things to his model railway, because he hasn't done that since probably about March. So for about six months he's not been in there and done anything. Um... Bloody daddy long legs flying around in here. Or a crane fly. If you prefer. There's loads down at Mum's. Probably because they've got the pond. Uh, I'm hoping my stepdad will um, want to spray up some die cast cars as well. And show me how to use the spray booth. I can do all the drilling and whatnot to take them apart, but I've never used the spray booth, so. That would be handy. I've actually got quite a bunch. All that cardboard box here, actually. All of that box, right there. Are all cars that I want to get restored. Or restore myself. If I actually had a little desk here or something, I'd set up spray booth in here and do it here. Because you can pick them up cheap enough. You can even make them yourself easy enough. And all you've got to do is buy the spray gun. I was talking about a decent video card for an XP build earlier. I got this one, but I think that's a bit overkill for what I want, to be honest. I think I'd rather save that. As either a spare for mine, or for another build. Right, what did I do with my drink? So I left it in here. I did. Turn that light off. I don't need that one on. You always get an itch somewhere the worst possible time. I've got both hands full. 
There we go. Oh, when Nemo's disappeared too. He was here. Is there anything else before I shut the camera down? I don't think so. Another video I want to do is basically an update on my laptop. So that's inspired by um, some videos I was watching on YouTube. I think his YouTube name is Luke Davis, I think. I'm sure he will comment and correct me. If I'm wrong. But he, I was watching some videos from him where he went through... Uh, all his laptops. That sort of inspired me to do the same thing. Just because I haven't looked at them for a long time because they're up in that top closet in the bedroom. I've actually lost count now because I've bought... I don't know how many I've bought this year <laughs> at car boot sales. But uh, yeah, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Dell I think because I've got quite a few Dell machines now. Even this one that I got working. So glad I got that one. I still haven't found the battery. I'm pretty certain I actually threw that battery out. Because like I said, I had the manky palm rest on it. Where it had gone all sticky and horrible because it was coated in that horrible stuff that they used to coat them with back then. Oh, nasty stuff. Anyway, I'm going to shut the video down, I think. I can't think of anything else at the moment. Yeah, so thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, even if it was just me chit-chatting about things. And uh, I'll talk to you again in the next video. Bye.